Welcome to my second video. In the first one we answer the question can a Vulcan modular sound like a real instrument and this one hopefully will ask the same question of a Behringer Crave. So my setup at the moment is I've got the Behringer Crave being run from MIDI from a Korg concert piano. Um, the audio from the Crave is going to the Korg Vulcan modular basically just so we can get a little bit of reverb if we need it. Um, and then the output of that is going back to the speakers of the Korg. So, can a Behringer Crave sound like a real instrument? Well, hopefully we'll prove that now. Start off, this is a, what I call a default patch. So basically, simple square wave, no, off, no modulation, filter all the way up, um, attack and decay, immediate basically just a straight square wave sound so if you play any notes oh, and also mention uh, I'm not running this through any effects I'm not running this uh, through any audio you're hearing exactly what I hear it's just being picked up on the microphone on the camera so standard not really sounding like anything just a normal everyday square wave so in the West Coast version, what we do is we use additive synthesis. So we take a very simple wave and we add things like wave folders and FM modulation to make it sound like a, a, a different instrument. With subtractive synthesis, you start off with a waveform and you cut bits back. So they're actually the same idea one starts from a simple one and goes more complicated the other one goes from a complicated waveform back to something simple so they're actually very very similar when you think about it so let's get started so from our five simple waveform let's start off let's make a trumpet sound so trumpet nice and simple everyone knows sawtooth ah, it's already sounding trumpet like now what we're going to do is first of all, for most of the first lot of instruments, we'll all use the same envelope. So most of these instruments, they don't have an immediate attack. In other words, they take a little bit of time to get going. They take a little bit of time to uh, quieten down. And basically there's no percussive element. So it's just a straight sustain. So we're going to put the attack up to about four, maybe the decay to five and leave the sustain. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting there. Um, now what we can do is the filter. Now one trick, a low pass gate in West Coast synthesis has always been uh, talked about as being very good for emulating instruments because that's the, that's the way a real instrument operates. It starts off when it's soft with a very low frequency and gets higher. So what we can do, a little trick, is if we turn the free filter frequency all the way down, and the VCO all the way up, then what happens is, and, and we run it off the envelope, as we press a note, you can hear the note getting a bit of a shape, which is actually getting very close to a trumpet. Now, all we have to do now is play around a bit with the envelope to get exactly what we want. So what we can do is, if we brighten it up, that's the starting point, already getting quite trumpet-like. If you wanted to make it more a horn, you can get turned down the modulation, so in other words, it goes not as high in the, uh, the frequency. And instead of being buzzy, it's now a bit softer. Now, if you remember from the first video, uh, when you put a little tiny bit of reverb, it completely changes the sound. So, for example, we just turn up the reverb a bit. Turn up the volume just a bit. Now we get a... A bit lower. That sounds a bit like a, a brass instrument, like a trombone. Um, if we want to make it 
sharper like a trumpet, we can go. And you have, there's a trumpet. Okay, next instrument. Something very similar to the trumpet, in fact. And on the Behringer Crave, we're going to keep the envelope the same for all of these instruments, so I won't mention it again. We're just going to change filter types and waveform types. So let's flick it across to the pulse. You can immediately hear a completely different timbre. Basically, we've gone from a brass instrument to a reed instrument. And we can pull this back just a little bit. There we have a clarinet. And all we had to do was change the filter just a little bit and change the waveform from sawtooth to square. Next instrument. If we want, say, something very similar to a clarinet, let's make an oboe. Now, when you're on pulse width, at the moment we're sitting right in the middle, that gives you a square wave. If we turn the pulse width knob, we can end up with basically a pulse rather than a square wave. So if you listen to the sound, there we have an oboe. Okay, so let's go back to our clarinet. What happens if we just decrease the filter a little bit? So instead of having those nice high frequency elements, let's cut them back a bit. So we'll leave everything the same. What happens as we turn the VCO mod? Make it a bit louder. Maybe have to make it a bit louder though. Ah, this has actually shown one thing. With all of these it actually makes a lot of sense to do one patch chord, and that patch chord is use the keyboard CV into the filter frequency cutoff. Now what that's going to do is that's going to track the cutoff to the keyboard. So certain some so, uh, sounds which have much higher frequencies, like a whistle, turn that down a bit now. now won't get louder and softer. We can do the same thing to the um, to the clarinet, oboe and or uh, trumpet, but it wasn't needed just because we had it all set up for that particular octave. So, a sort of an, uh, a recorder sound. And now, for our fourth instrument, simply flick it across the sawtooth. Now a lot of whistles and stringed instruments are actually sawtooth in nature. So if we've now, we went from a clarinet, well, sorry, a, a recorder to a a flute. So you have a recorder, a flute. Now we can put vibrato and things on. In fact, let's let's even do that now. So for example, we can use the LFO, we can go to frequency, and we can just a little tiny bit. Maybe a bit faster.
So there's four or five instruments very simply just with moving one or two dials. Now, now that we've got a sound, uh, a string and a flute are all uh, very sine wave but all you know, coming from a, a sawtooth. What we can do now is we can change the envelope. So we get our... Actually, we'll turn down the... So we've just got a, a normal flute. Now, let's put a percussive envelope. Now, by percussive, we mean it starts off very quickly and then fades away. So we'll turn our attack all the way down. We'll have our decay. We'll leave our decay there. And what we're going to do is turn the sustain down. So we go up very quickly, down, and then to a constant note. Now, the reason we do that is uh, so we get th that percussive start. So okay. that sounds a bit like a plucked string. But now what we can do is turn the sustain up a bit. piano-like sound. Now if we were to go down, make it a bit louder, make it a bit louder, maybe new. We can change some of the we can get a bass because remember, the piano and the bass are both stringed instruments. One's hit by a hammer, one's plucked. So just by changing the envelope and a little bit of filter, we can go from a... So a piano sound. To the bass sound. I'll just clean it a little bit up. Okay. Now, one other that you can do that actually the Crave can do a very good job on is strings. Now, normally strings, people talk about having multiple oscillators and multiple um, envelopes and things like that, but Basically, you can do a pretty reasonable string with uh, the Crave. Now, I'm going to have to cheat with this one because I can never remember it, so I've got my trusty patch with me. And I'll just, this requires a couple of extra leads. So, we still have our keyboard CV to the VCO. Um, we're going to put oscillator FM to VC mix. We're going to run VC mix from triangle wave and I'll show you why in a sec. Okay. Now with strings, strings are also a triangle a, a sawtooth wave. If you imagine the strings being pulled back and then released. So what we can do is let's unlike a normal instrument um, the strings don't normally get louder and softer, they've got a, a resonating chamber. So what we can do is set the cut off um, and we'll, we'll put this here. So what we've done now is the vibrato, we want to get a very fine control over it. So instead of using it straight onto the, um, using this, the oscillator mod, we've actually gone through VC mix and into the oscillator frequency modulation. We'll also turn up the attack, decay, now, strings also have a, a pluck or a, an initial sound, so they, what we've done is we've turned the sustain, uh, the res, yeah, sustain down. So, okay. Now, one thing, we haven't done it with any of the other instruments, but for this one, what we're going to do is just put a little bit of reverb. So let's make sure that we've got everything in the right way. Maybe turn that down just a 
violin but one thing the violin has a very high uh, frequency resonator so what we can actually do is turn up resonance a little bit we actually get an even more believable violin so uh, what's what's happy um, we can do down lower because the, the violin uh, uses the notes near the four strings. When you go to uh, viola, it goes down one fifth so that still sounds alright. go down another fifth you get a cello and if you want a slightly more mellow sound you can turn the resonance down so you can get a and a double bass is even lower than that So there are strings on the crave. Now, the crave can also emulate other sounds. So it's fair enough um, trying to emulate a, a flute or a clarinet. Can it do some of those classical synthesizer sounds, sounds that you'd normally expect to be uh, made with a much, much bigger and more complicated machine? Uh, basically what I'm talking about is things like a detuned saw. Now, by definition, to have a detuned saw, you need two saws. So, obviously the Crave can't do that, but what it can do is pulse width modulation. Now, pulse width modulation ends up effectively having the same frequencies as uh, a sawtooth would. By model modifying the pulse wave, it's the same as having two square waves that are slightly out of tune so it gives the impression of having two oscillators so what we can do we'll leave in our normal one there for now so what we'll do is just give it a nice standard and we'll go to pulse wave and what we'll do is with, uh, by the way, for people who don't know, the oscillator modulation, basically the easiest way to look at it is that's how much from zero up to halfway, that's how much extra and less it will go. So if you put the pulse width in the middle, it's effectively going from one side to another. Now what that means is it's the equivalent of going through all the whole waveform, so it's got two, it's like having two waveforms of slightly different frequency. So we'll go from the LFO, and we'll say width and there's like an 80s I'll turn it down a bit that's the beginnings of quite a nice sort of 1980s detuned saw just to show you if we turn the modulation right down so it's just a straight square wave very different to now 
uh, one trouble with pulse uh, with the pulse wave modulation is of pulse width modulation sorry is it's always a constant and basically when you've got two frequencies very close to each other they create what's called a beat frequency which is the difference now the lower you go the less frequency it is to make another note so for example something that sounds nice there if I go down an octave I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear it sounds like it's warbling. And if you go up high, you lose it. So, here's another trick. You can use the keyboard to actually track the low frequency oscillator. So instead of putting that there, we'll put this now into multiple. We'll take the first multiple and go back to our offset. We'll take the second multiple and we're going to go to the mix. We'll take the mix out and we'll go from there into the low frequency rate. So there's our first note. If we go, So now we've got a detuned saw which changes the frequency, which you can probably see by the LED, depending on where we go. Right, so what can you do with this? This is, this is basically the, the whole 1980s. You can change the character just by changing the, the filters. You can add some resonance. You can also create some pretty decent pads. So, for example, one for a pad. So that's how you emulate multiple oscillators on a Behringer Crave. Also allows you to do some interesting things, just change the old although. Maybe a bit louder. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Um, so hopefully that's answered the question, can a Behringer Crave sound like a real instrument? The answer is, yes it can. Thanks for watching.